Awesome. Kia ora. Uh, As I already said, Core Adam Moriarty, Toko Wingoa. I'm uh, Head of Information Library and Inquiry Services at Auckland War Memorial Museum. And even though that's what my question is, I'm actually today going to talk a little bit about mission fulfillment. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, um, what I'm about to go through isn't going to be particularly revolutionary. It's not going to be radical, uh, groundbreaking, puzzling, surprising. It's all going to be really simple and obvious. But what I'm hoping is that on Thursday, when you get back to work and you're full of all that post-NDF energy, you want, to put you want to implement something, you're going to go, hey, that was simple, that was obvious, um, and you'll go forth and conquer. Um, yeah, hopefully. But um, yeah, just because something is simple and obvious doesn't necessarily mean it's not hard. And for me, actually, it's been particularly hard. Um, and that's because at Auckland Museum, I think we have a really solid uh, mission. Um, inspire discoveries and connecting through stories of land, sea and people. And I know my purpose. I know why I turn up to work to help achieve that mission. I'm going to put our metadata on the web. And we're going to do it in a, a website we've cleverly called Collections Online. And I've known for six years, that's what I know I do. And, and, it's, and for the last four years, some of you are probably sick of seeing me turn up here and talk about it. Because we first came, we talked about we're, we're open, open as a rule, closed only in exceptions, open by default. We then put a million records online, then 375,000 images under a CC by license, free, open, downloadable to anyone. Then we built an API using the principles of um, linked open data, following uh, giving programmatic access to anyone who wanted um, everything from the collection. And the museum's been putting some real, uh, you know, putting weight behind collections online, putting weight behind these things because, uh, again, you'll have heard other talks from, from colleagues where we closed a gallery and we got seven photographers, 16 um, uh, catalogers who went through enriching our data. You can see some of the beautiful images that the team have made up here. 2,000 new images every month, 2,000 new records, 5,000 updates made every single day to existing records. It's a powerhouse of knowledge generation that we're thrusting out into the world through our platform. And when we launched, we saw massive spikes, 700% increase in users and social media traffic. But then it kind of you know, stayed the same. We saw a few spikes, Anzac Day, Passchendaele, to be expected. And so about 18 months ago, we started looking into this. We started that discussion of, well, are we meeting our mission? We, we, we are for an audience that isn't really moving. What do we need to do? What do we need to level up our audience to engage people, to inspire and connect people with our collections? And what we came up with is really simple and obvious. And I'm a little bit embarrassed to say it out loud. But we realized that most people, most people don't, don't care. Most people don't know. And most people don't even care to know about Auckland. And once you accept that, <laughs> And I know you guys are sitting there going like, hey, it's, an Auckland, it's a Wellington crowd. It's taken me six years to get here, but I'm there. <laughs> Once you accept that, you can kind of start moving your mind frame. I mean, it makes perfect sense. There's, I can't remember what Michael said. It was like six, seven billion people on the planet. Just most of them don't know Auckland exists, let alone that there's a War Memorial Museum there. And in that War Memorial Museum, there's a botany department. And in that botany department, the specimens collected by Joseph Banks. It, the, the maths just, it doesn't work. They don't know. And I realized, and this was what was hard, I realized I'd got my purpose wrong. My role wasn't to build a collections online. My role was to put the collections online anywhere. And so we decided to change, to, to diversify, to rethink our approach. And we did. We decided the best way to amplify our collections was through collaboration to partner with like-minded organizations, people who shared our passion for creativity, our passion for open access, our, our passion for knowledge creation, places that already had a, an audience of users on a, on a quest for knowledge that we could help. And with that in mind, we started. And the first, the, the first and the best decision we made, we've already heard about, and I was going to give you guys a really big sales pitch, but Digital New Zealand, the best thing that we did straight away. As a sector, how lucky are we to have such a wonderful resource? These guys took our data. They, they've got the manpower. They've got the, um, all the heavy lifting to then amplify our collections out to an audience, to align us with places like uh, Europeana. You may not know about Auckland, but you may know about New Zealand. And you may know about this wonderful content that you can come and find.
Now, I'm going to give lots of big, dumb numbers through this because hey, we all love them. Um, we see more content. We see our content get used more in digital New Zealand in one month, more page views and interactions on digital New Zealand than we do in our own website in maybe three or four months. Now, does that matter? The mission is to inspire and connect, not to get referrals to our own website. When you start rethinking that, you start seeing that working with partners is a great way to reach and fulfill your mission. Next, we went and spoke to our natural scientists and said, hey, where do you guys get your data? You know, about dead stuff. Where, where do you guys go to get your information? And you'll, I mean, it's simple and obvious. Eh? None of them went to museum sites. They used things like Atlas of Living Australia, the Biodiversity Heritage Library, GBIF, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. So we decided to jump all in with these. We decided to go into these portals and meet them with commitment, enthusiasm, respect. I mean, simple and obvious stuff, right? We gave all of our data over. Not just that, we're looking at how it gets used so we can improve it, so we can edit and update and do data cleaning projects so that our data can be, we can be part of the system. We become a good user, a good participant. We enthusiastically look at how we're working and try and be the best participant that we can. And again, more big dumb numbers. We get 20,000 downloads of our content through those sites every single month. Most of those records have never been looked at on collections online. And that's fine. Because over in the Atlas of a Living Australia, or GBIF, our content's getting used for citizen science, um, biodiversity research, taxonomic research, just education in general. That's the mission. That's what we're here to do, right? Put our collections out to inspire and to connect. Now, most of those people, they, they don't necessarily come back to AucklandMuseum.com. And that's fine. They can do everything they want in this site, in their, in their usual research ecosystem. They can stay in there, that's fine. We put our stuff to them. The mission is to inspire and connect, not to get page views. Next, we had to rethink portals that we'd kind of laughed off. Ones where we, you know, we've all done it, oh, that's not really for us. So Pinterest is the perfect example. Five years ago, we, we set up an account and we loaded it full of uh, marketing images of uh, weddings, because we all know Pinterest is about weddings and hairdressing. And so, <laughs> And that's what we saw on Collections Army, so it's a small trickle of people coming. So we committed one person's time, 5% of one person's time, which is nothing, to working in that space. We said, get in there and just see what you can do. Take these beautiful images and put them in. We also chose a member of staff who is right at the forefront, a collection technician, someone who knows what's coming out and also knows that community, knows that you're not just going to take a, an XML uh, metadata dump and stick it in and Find, find a group of people who want to work with you. What we did find is a group of artists and creatives who were using our content, who were inspired by the objects that we had, who were using it in ways that we never thought about. Big dumb number. 50,000 interactions with our content every month through that platform. I mean, that's it. We've connected, we've inspired people with our collections. That's the mission, right? Again, most people don't come back to us. That's fine. That's not the mission. Now, we've got 22 partnerships set up, all with like-minded organizations, to try and get our content out in front of audiences where they are already searching. And there's one more I want to talk about. Um, and it's one, to be honest, we've all heard a little bit about. And I think we're going to hear a little bit more about um, in this conference. We've heard passionate talks from people like Siobhan, who I was trying to see in the audience, Siobhan, Mike, and, uh, and Stuart. And that's Wikipedia. And again, I've heard these talks, I've sat there listening to them and kind of gone, yeah, it's, it's in the too hard basket, right? How does this open world or this, this website that allows anyone to edit, how's that going to be important? How does that work with our traditional uh, workflows and, and systems? And so, yeah, it was always put into the too hard basket. That's, that's for the next guy, right? Last year, we decided, no, it's time. Enthusiasm, respect, commitment, we're going in. We got ourselves, yeah, we got, which is honestly how I had to brace myself to go into this. Um, it's like, we can do it, guys. Um, we got ourselves a, a Wikimedian in residence. That person started working, started training staff, started to change the internal culture around what this site could do. Then we got some volunteers. And these volunteers uploaded images for us. In fact, they uploaded 100,000 images for us. 
I mean, I'm just going to put that to one side because that's amazing and deserves a talk on its own. Volunteers uploading 100,000 images, classifying, cataloging, and putting them onto a website for us. Not a cent of museum time spent on that. Those images then, um, those images are now used on 2,000 Wikipedia pages in 83 languages. I mean, that's insane. We could never think to do that. I could, never, I could barely get English working sometimes. And here we are with 83 languages showing our content to the world. That's mission fulfillment. Next, we looked at some of our most popular stuff. One image in particular gets a quarter of a million page views every single month. I mean, that blows my mind, that our content could be used in such a way that our objects can inspire stories out in the world. Now, that same object has had 50 page views in our own website in the last three years, and I'm 90% confident that's me looking at it going, what? <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Now, of course, you're all going to go, quarter of a million page views on Wikipedia, meh. No one comes back to our site. What does it matter that that image flashed in front of their eyes for a second? It matters because they saw it. It matters because one of them may have been inspired by it. Now, not all of them, in fact, like 1%, under 1% of them actually click and come back. But that doesn't matter. The mission is to connect and inspire, not to count page views on a website. When that starts making sense, it all does. Now, I'm, I'm probably meant to spend some time answering the question. Um, do we need a collections online? I need a job, so yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's a solid foundation. It's a solid foundation from which everything else can be built. And no one else is going to do it, so we have to. But I don't think you have to follow our path. I don't think you have to do the same as what everyone else does. Open by default. Build a platform. Fill it with beautiful, rich content. Make an API and then work with partners. Maybe if you've got limited time, maybe if you've got limited resources, you just need to jump from one end to the other. I don't know. Once you start thinking about that, thinking about what your mission is and how you can best fulfill it, and realizing that your mission isn't to count page views, your mission is to connect people with your objects, to, to tell a story and to remind yourself why we're all doing this. Honestly, I think the rest is just simple and obvious. Anyway, thank you.